I found this nice exercise here that is a good demonstration of context-free grammar, and I'd like to solve it using that method as well. Let's uh, quickly read through the uh, exercise, then I'll explain what a context-free grammar is, and we'll see how that is useful. So given n pairs of parentheses, write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. So basically we work, uh, we form words, made up of n parentheses with valid bracketing. So open, close, always in the same uh, balanced balance. Yeah. So we see we have all permutation of three, whereas with n equals one, we have <coughs> all permutation of one. We know that we are scoped between one and eight. That is kind of important because this is exponential. This explodes really fast. Eight is a fairly low number. Um, it's going to be three to the power of eight, I believe. Four to the power of eight. Was it five? It might be. F no, it's, it should be four to the power of eight. I, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Anyway, um, let's switch to the editor. And I won't be solving it in the lead code editor because it annoyed me last time too much. I'll be doing it this time in Python. The language again shouldn't matter. I'll just copy the problem definition so that we can see it. <clears throat> now, what is a context-free grammar? Or what is a grammar in the first place? So a grammar is a set of rules and symbols that define a set of words also called a language. Um, so let's imagine um, yeah, let's just write down a few things and then I'll explain exactly how it works. So a context-free grammar has uh, something called terminal symbols. Um, it has non-terminal symbols and it got rules. It also got a start. <clears throat> If we, for example, wanted to create palindromes, that's also a good example of a context-free grammar. Um, we could define it as, let's say, just all palindromes of the words, of the symbols A and B. So our terminal symbols would be lowercase a and b. Our known terminals could be a and b, capital, and then the rules Let's also add a start symbol, and that is just the start. And then we'd had ha, would have a list of rules, um, and that would explain to us how we transform the non-terminal symbols into terminal symbols or other non-terminal symbols. Um, I hope this will be clearer if we work through an example. So, let's say the start can go to the just empty word or it can go to a or it can go to b let's let's just write them all in one line then it's a bit easier to read <clears throat> um, and a b can turn to a bb um, a b can turn to a b or a b a b or a b b b for example and let's say a can turn to a um, a a a and a b b so that would be all the rules to define all palindromes over uh, the alphabet A and B. So how would this work? If we just play through it, how this would work, we would start with a word S, since that is the start, and then we apply uh, any rule. Any rule that uh, fits. In our case, that's just S. If we apply the lowercase rule, 
um, the empty word rule, then we just default to an empty word, which is also a valid palindrome. It reads the same backwards as forwards. If we apply this rule to map to an A, then we can apply the next fitting rule. Uh, I'll just write that with a pipe symbol afterwards. So um, <clears throat> and I call this B1, A1, B2, A2, and B A3, B3. So we used after S we used uh, this is S1. which resulted A in A and let's use, let's let's just say we use A1, which results in just the letter A. At this point, no non-terminal symbols are left. So we're done with the generation and we would have generated the word A. Now we can apply the, another rule uh, instead. For example, we could apply A2. So we'd be in this situation and then we could apply, for example, A again and we'd end up with a triple A word. This is not, not very interesting. The A3 rule would be a bit more interesting to it. Uh, so if we apply A3, then we generate AB, um, ABA, and we can now apply one of the B rules. And if we apply, for example, B1, we'd end up with ABA, which is again a palindrome. If we apply, on the other hand, the rule um, B, Two, for example, then we'd end up with a a, a b b a because we replace b with b a uh, b a b and we had a b a before. So if we replace this part with b a, this should be an a b a b, and we can see how we always grow a symmetric part around the single letter in the middle. And this will construct every single palindrome. And the language over a grammar are the, is the entire set of all words gener that we can generate with that rule set. Uh, one thing to note is every word will be finite since it's only then a word when there are non-terminals, no terminal no non-terminal symbols left. Um, and that can all, uh, and then we have no steps to proceed. So there's no way to make an infinitely large word, but any word could be arbitrarily large. Now there are grammars where there's a fixed size on the words as well, but uh, in case of palindromes or bracketing words, they are not limited in size. So. Now that we know what a grammar is, we could think about what kind of grammar would generate all possible parentheses words. Um, so we'd have a start. We could go back to the empty, for example, um, or let's go to just a B, a placeholder for a bracket, for example. Um, and a B can turn into um, the empty bracket or it could turn into a, a prepending bracket. <clears throat> or appending it. Or we could surround the entire word with brackets. Or we could just create a second um, bracket word. So this would generate um, we, we need this rule to generate things like like this word, for example, if I could type like this word, for example, because with only prepending and appending and surrounding, we can never generate two nested uh, words. So we need to have two nested here. And these rules should be complete. Um, We can concatenate any bracketing words together and there's only a single uh, word can only have this shape, right? So 
how could we encode this in uh, Python? And in this case, I cheated a bit and played around with it already because I didn't want to just get stuck, especially since I haven't written Python in about a year. <clears throat> so we can define our rule sets, for example, as a set of uh, lambdas that take a symbol that would be our non-terminal. Let's call it NT for non-terminal. Or lower case NT, I guess. <clears throat> and it'll map, map to a series of symbols. Um, let's say, exa for example, that we map to B if NT equals uh, to S, as we don't map to anything, because this rule does not apply to that symbol. <clears throat> and we don't want to actually, if we read our problem definition, Again, we want to only create them of a fixed length. So we don't want to actually apply rules that remove terminal symbols. We want to, with every step, add one non-terminal symbol. Um, we don't care about resolving some of them, but we always want to add one bracket. And every B is add one bracket. So we never want to use this rule. We never want to use this rule. Everything else is fine. We always create a new bracket. <clears throat> so now we have to encode these four rules. We can expand a B into two Bs, or we can expand it into um, the surrounding bracket and our non-terminal symbols in that case are the brackets. We've got the trailing B and we've got the leading B. Right, those are our rules uh, encoded and we should be able to generate all our words from this. Let me copy over the scaffold from lead code because they do that in a, in a class always. <clears throat> and now our job is to actually generate the words. Uh, this is a candidate for recursion. So I'd also do this recursively. And we want to apply one rule per step. We don't want to apply, uh, replace multiple um, non-terminals per step. This would technically be fine. Um, but since we want to only translate a n amount of brackets, we don't want to do that ad infinitum. Um, and this will just make our lives easier. So let's set up our recursion. Def generate um, parents. <clears throat> and we'll take in our a set of words that we want to expand. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> and if n equals to one, so we have one expansion left. Um, then we would just return words. Now, the reason we do this uh, first step will become more obvious later, but I intend to at the very end replace every B's as in every bracket with um, the rule we deleted here. Um, the This one, apply at n equals one. So that we don't lose any b since we add one b in every step. 
um, at the end we'll have some bees left over, but we can just transform them to the empty bracket. They're not going to contain other brackets at that point. They're, they're, we're done. And that's the reason for why I escape at one <clears throat> already. Now, for the new words, we want to create uh, an empty set. It's, it's a set because we'll generate duplicates. For example, um, some of these words can mirror into each other. For example, um, if we prepend uh, and we append and then transform the B into the empty bracket, for example, we end up with the same symbol. Um, same as if we um, allow this, for example, to create two, uh, this, this one just creates the empty bracket and this creates um, and another B, then we see this rule is basically the same as this, if this one uh, was converted to the empty bracket. So <clears throat> that's why we create a set it's just for us so that we don't keep duplicates. We could deal with duplicates, but this is just easier. So for every word in words, um, we want to generate all expanded words. So every word will yield potentially multiple follow-up words. And that is if, because we could apply a rule multiple times in the in effect. And then we want to apply our rules. So for rule, uh, rule in rules. <clears throat> And then we want to apply a rule on a per symbol basis. So for the index in so for every index in this word, we want to apply the rule. And this applied rule will either be none if the rule did not apply, or it will be the translation, um, the, the new symbols that we want to add. So uh, I'm going to encode a word as an array of symbol or a list of symbol, actually as a tuple of symbols, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So. Actually, we should we should uh, define this. This is a, <clears throat> a tuple of, this is a set of tuples of string. <clears throat> that's, that's what a word is supposed to be encoded as. And that is also what we want to return. That is not how you write it in Python, I think. Like this, yeah. Yeah, wrong keys. So, <clears throat> okay, so if the rule applied, then we want to construct our word and add it to our new words. So new words, um, add, and I'm going to use really janky list comprehension here, I think. So we copy our word with, this is the dot 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 in Python, basically. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to take the, um, we're going to keep everything from the word up to this index. And then we'll use our, the new symbols from our rule. Well, not our rule, from the applied. And then the rest of a word. So let me get rid of this console over here. Right, Python doesn't need brackets. So this is basically a slice from JavaScript. So it keeps the first S, uh, the, the first part of a word up to S index 
Then we replace the one symbol we applied the rule to with this character sequence. And then we add the rest of the word um, back in. And we add that to our word, uh, new words. And then we can just return, return our new words. That is everything we need to do here. I don't care about that warning. Why is it warning? Got tuple, tuple, any, 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 but it's not any, 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 it's okay, whatever, don't care. <clears throat> so our expanded is just our um, gener gener generate parents with our n. And in which order did I? Actually, we should call this recursively. Self dot generate parents, and then it's n minus one, and new words. This makes more sense. And here we call it just with the start symbol. Uh, this should be a tuple. Those are all our expanded words. <clears throat> we want to bail on zero and on one. So if n equals to zero, we return the empty list. If n equals one, we return the um, just single bracket. The reason we need to bail on n equals one is because on equals n equals one, we'd return the um, the input words here. So we'd get s back. And if we want to replace all b's, this, this is gonna inflict. Obviously we could also replace it, but this is also feasible. <clears throat> and then we want to um, construct our new set. So for a word in our um, set and we expand it. Uh, word for word and expand it. This is a map in uh, JS. Basically, this is the the how we iterate forward, this is the name of a variable and this is the new value. <clears throat> and this is a tuple, so we want to join it back together to a string. There's no separator. And then let's replace all b's with the empty bracket. This gets rid of all duplicates and then cast, the, cast this back convert it back to a list and we should be done. Let's test this. Uh, if I grab the, let's say we, we're gonna put um, three in here. Let's start with a trivial case, zero. Zero returned, z no. zero. Returned the empty array, that is correct. On one, we returned the empty, uh, the single parenthesis. Um, two did not work. which is interesting. So let's print uh, our expanded out here. And we see we got the single B here. So this might be wrong. 
So we got the double words, then we also don't need to bail on um, this one here. Let's see for three if this still holds true. Three are these words, that seems valid. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These are valid and here we see the, the one I said why we need BB, this one here. So this seems valid then we probably don't need this one either. Because on one we are going to apply the rule at least once which is going to convert to B. And then we can check against zero. We're checking against zero, which will skip the S case. Of course, we could also replace S with the empty string here with another replacement. We don't would need this guard here. We don't need this print anymore. <clears throat> Let's copy this over. Let me switch the to the browser and input this and let's submit this. And we succeeded. It's not going to be the fastest solution because we're generating a lot of objects and unnecessary arrays. If we go back to the editor, um, this is fairly wasteful what we're doing here. But it is using the, the grammar itself. Right, that's all I wanted to show. There's a space in here. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. If you want me to take a look at some concept or explain something, I'll gladly do so. In that case, also just leave a comment.